Hello everyone, thank you for clicking on the video. Today we are going to start this journey that we're going to go on together. We are going to chronicle the St. Louis Cardinals season, news, updates, rumors, and analysis. Everything you need to know about the St. Louis Cardinals is going to be covered in these short videos. I'm excited to get started, so why don't we start right now. Week one of the MLB season did not necessarily go the Cardinals' way. They went two and four. They won the series against Toronto, uh, two games to one, and they were swept by the Atlanta Braves. And the big story, there's a couple big stories, but the big story is the pitching, and that's probably what everybody's freaking out about. Miles Michaelis is the only pitcher that started multiple games for them, and he has not been good. Uh, in nine innings, he's given up 10 earned runs for a 9.64 ERA. Not ideal uh, for your top-of-the-line starting pitcher. And this is just going to add fuel to the fire to the folks who think uh, the Cardinals need to go out and get a top-of-the-line starting pitcher, which I am in that camp. But let's not freak out yet because it is the beginning of the season. You know, we, we just have to take a deep breath. Because Miles Michaelis has been really good in the past, so I think he can he can bounce back. But we'll see. Some other notable starters: Jake Woodford got knocked around quite a bit, four and a third innings, gave up six earned runs. Montgomery looked okay. Steven Matz looked all right, but you know he give up he gave up a couple home runs there. He did strike out seven batters. So the starting pitching is interesting. What I was most intrigued with was Jack Flaherty's start, and we were actually there for this. And you look at the numbers, and you look, you, you see he walked seven guys and only struck out four, only pitched in five innings, but his stuff looked really good to me when I was watching the game. It looked like he had good movement on the slider, good movement on his changeup or whatever that pitch is. It just it, it looked like it was just dropping really nicely and almost like moving too much out of the strike zone. So I thought he had really good movement on his stuff, and it's going to be interesting to watch his next start. Flaherty is next scheduled to start Friday against the Brewers, against Brandon Woodruff. That should be a really fun game to watch. And it's a big series on the road in Milwaukee. So I'm excited to see if Flaherty can gain a little bit of, bit of the command because if he gets the command, I feel like the stuff looked really good. So I'm excited for Jack Flaherty. But overall, this Cardinals starting pitching staff needs to be better. Now let's talk about uh, the elephant in the room and the Tyler O'Neill thing. Ali Marmol's got to do better than this. There's a better way to handle that than to just call him out in the media Good organizations handle things in house, and I really wish Ali Marmol wouldn't have done that. Because when you watch the play, and again, if you're not quite sure uh, what what we're talking about here, Tyler O'Neill rounding third base did not look like he was dogging it to me, but the effort was called into question from the manager. Right there was a throw from Ronald Acuna Jr. from right field, and Tyler O'Neill got thrown out at the plate. Again, to me, it looked like he was hustling. You can let me know if you disagree in the comments. It didn't look like it to me, right? But for Ali Marmol to call him out in the press conference, to me, that's unacceptable. It it it, it just I I I don't agree with it at all. I don't I just there's a better way to handle that, and I wish it wouldn't have happened. Hopefully. Ollie went to Tyler O'Neill, had a good conversation with him, and they're past it now. And let's face it, we'll probably forget about this in a couple weeks anyway. So, uh, but yeah, it, it was unnecessary. Unnecessary drama is always something I'm going to argue against. So, the Tyler O'Neill situation shouldn't, it should have never got to that. It should have never been a story at all. So, let's talk about the Cardinals. Like, the one good thing going is this Cardinals offense. I mean, it, it didn't really show up in the Braves series, but I mean, Paul Goldschmidt is hitting 450 right now. And so he's picking up right where he left off at the end of his MVP season. And 
Another, I mean, this offense, you look, Nolan Arnato sitting over 300. Jordan Walker coming off hitting his first home run in the major in, in the major leagues, 333 average. You got guys like Nolan Gorman crushing the ball. Dylan Carlson's playing well. And I am I was really surprised, honestly, when Alec Burleson was getting more starts than Dylan Carlson. That tells me something that I think that tells me that they prefer Alec Burleson, which is interesting. They pre- they prefer Tyler O'Neill in center field because you look at it and yeah, Carlson's played in five games, but Burleson has more at bats. Uh, it's it's interesting. It's interesting to me that Burleson is getting the nod. Maybe that's because he's a left-handed hitter, but that surprised me. Again, Lars Newtbar injured his thumb. He's going to be out for a little bit. Hopefully, he can come back soon. Excitement around Jordan Walker feels legit just watching him play thus far. And I know it's early, but he's gotten off to a really good start. And he looks like he's going to be an impactful member of that lineup for a long time. And it's exciting. You know, you throw, you throw uh, Wilson Contreras, who dodged a bullet. With the literally, I mean, with the whole Jordan Hicks getting crossed up, hitting him in the knee, so he's he's come back since then and he's played really well. So this Cardinals offense is really exciting. It's top five in the in the MLB for sure. And even though this team is two and four and they've gotten off to a rocky start, you got to consider who they've played. The Braves are one of the best teams in Major League Baseball, probably the best team in the National League this year. You could argue for it. And they're really good. So, yeah, the Cardinals are 2-4, and four, but I wouldn't overreact yet. Let's see how they play against the Brewers. And I'm really interested to see how Jack Flaherty does against Brandon Woodruff because I think that's a start. Call me crazy. I think he can win with the stuff that he put on display against the Blue Jays. I mean, we forget he walked seven guys, but he had a no hitter through five innings or something like that. The stuff was there. So I'm really intrigued by that. And I'm really intrigued to see how this Cardinal lineup performs against Milwaukee, against the team that's inferior offensively. So maybe uh, if the Cardinals can just get solid pitching this season, they are going to score a lot of runs and they're going to win a lot of games. But let me know what you think in the comments. Like, subscribe the video. My name is Seth Dewald. You can follow me at Seth underscore D-I-E-W-O-L-D. You can find the podcast, Long Live Baseball Podcast, on Spotify. Link will be in the description. Be on the lookout for Mike Jones's Cubs updates, news and updates. He is going to have a video as well. That is all. See you later. Thank you for watching. Have a good night. <laughs>